driving again today and I just wanted to um, kind of pick up with some more stories of when I lived in the recovery home in Pensacola and I worked for Sandra, my Sunday school teacher. Um, now Sandra and her husband, like I told you, they were very wealthy. Um, her husband's, um, I don't know if it was his grandfather or his father, but it was a scrap metal business, very, uh, very profitable that he had inherited from his parents. Um, so they had plenty of money. So um, Sandra owned a condominium there at, on Pensacola Beach. So she would also have me go out there and clean it, um, usually about one day a week. And I got paid the same salary, so $5.50 an hour. And that condo was on the third floor, so I had to climb those stairs. And, carry the cleaning supplies up there and whatever else Sandra wanted me to, to take out there for her to have for whenever she came to spend a few days at the condo. But even when she was at the condominium, she would still sit on that computer and um, on the word processor and type and type and type and type the Bible. <laughs> but she did have a bicycle that had a little motor on it. so. Um, there was a little storage room down underneath um, the condominiums, and she kept her bicycle down there. So she would take the bicycle and, with the little motor on it and ride up down the beach. Um, she was so cute. I, I really don't have any complaints about her, other than, you know, just talking about how strange and her weird ways, which we all have those ways. But, um, Every now and then, she would advertise the condominium for rent, like a home. Um, that was before Airbnb, but there were places online where you could um, advertise it for rent. So, yeah, she would rent it, and I would go out there before the, the renters came and, you know, make it look real nice. And she had me buy mints and put, you know, make up the bed real pretty and put mints on the pillows and all that. And, um... Uh, and she got really good money off the rental. I mean, it was right on the beach. And also, Pensacola is where the Blue Angels are stationed. So I would get to see them practice all the time, and it was just fascinating. I think it's called Eglin Air Force Base. Um, I can't look it up, and I'm just relying on my memory, which isn't that good. But uh, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. But um, anyway, she had rented the condominium out to this couple who were newlyweds and they were coming there for their honeymoon. So I went and I cleaned it and got it ready for them and everything. So they stayed about uh, four or five days. So then Sandra had me go out to clean it whenever they left. Y'all, I opened up the door and the smell of blood nearly knocked me out. I was scared to go in there. I didn't know, I didn't know what in the world I was going to see. Well, don't watch any more of this if you're squeamish when someone talks about blood or hemorrhaging. But the woman, it was, apparently it was that time of the month for her. And y'all, she really had some serious problems. She had hemorrhaged. I mean, every trash can was full of soiled sanitary napkins. Um sanitary pass, you know, so I had all that mess to clean up, so here I am, empty all the trash cans, and, and I called Sandra, I said, Sandra, when I opened the door, the smell of blood nearly knocked me out, she said, well, go, um, you know, just clean it up the best you can, and, and, um, and, and let me know when you're done, so I go to the, um, the master bedroom to strip the bed, a big king size bed, and I pull the covers back and the mattress was soaking wet in blood. I mean, that woman had hemorrhaged all through Sandra's mattress. I mean, it, it was unsalvageable. There's no way I could have cleaned it or any professional service could have cleaned it. So I, I had to call Sandra and tell her, you know, I'm sorry, but this is what's happened, and, and you need to get out here and, and decide what you're going to do about this, you know. So, needless to say, um, she ended up having to get someone out there to, to remove the mattress and, and destroy it and haul it off. 
off. Um, and she had to go buy a new, a new bedroom set, um, a mattress, and I don't know if she bought the box spring or not, but it, it all had to be replaced. I mean, that, you know, I really couldn't blame the woman for it. I, I don't really know. I mean, I do feel bad for her that, that she did have this serious problem. And I felt bad that it was their honeymoon, too, so, <laughs> poor thing. But that's just another one of my little stories, so I hope I don't turn your stomach and y'all just keep on coming back.